People who come to Baikal think there's not much life here. But actually, if you just lift a stone very gently, you realize it's teeming with life. meters deep and 636 kilometers long, it contains nearly 20% of the world's fresh water. Its waters are the purest on Earth. Its climate is one of the harshest, dropping as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius in winter. But neither ice, wind, nor the interminable winter can hamper the development of an animal and plant life that is unique in the world. In this grandiose and hostile nature, men and women have chosen to lead a rare and remarkable existence. Located 1,500 kilometers north of Mongolia, Baikal lies right in the heart of Asia. It contains as much water as all the American Great Lakes combined. Russians call it their Great Sacred Sea. For more than 20 years, Sasha Yakovlev has been traveling the lake up and down. Here, near Olkhan Island, it's the beginning of March, and the arrival of spring has broken up the ice, erecting a chaos of icy barriers that are tough to cross. Sasha transports goods and often provides the only link between the lake's inhabitants. He knows when it's possible to forge through or when he needs to turn back, because unlike Baikal, the ice always has the last word. Even when it's over a meter thick, the lake's ice remains alive, subjected to powerful internal forces. Huge blocks of ice collide, long cracks form, and actual walls rise up. These barriers on Baikal are what we call ice hummocks. They form very easily. When the lake starts to freeze, the layer of ice is torn up and carried by the wind. The pieces are blown into certain spots and pile up to form barriers like this. This hummock is relatively small, but there are thicker ones. When that happens, it's impossible to cross them by car. These vertical ice sheets can loom 10 to 12 meters high. But they are not the only danger lurking for travelers. Fractures can appear and stretch for several kilometers. Depending on the temperature and weather conditions, they either contract or expand, sometimes leaving a gap two meters wide. I've fallen in the water before. It happened last year on April 26th. I was driving along on an old fissure, and in those spots the ice disappears much faster and becomes more fragile. So there we were, and the car sank, right in the middle of Baikal. We didn't even bother trying to get it out.
Very few people live along the shores of this immense lake. There is only one city in the north, Severobaikovsk, with just 20,000 people. The south boasts a handful of small villages whose total population is under 50,000. For hundreds of kilometers between these two outermost points, there is not a single road nor barely a soul. Over two-thirds of Baikal's shores are completely untouched and uninhabited. This pristine environment is home to a host of animal and plant species, some of which are found nowhere else on Earth. How did such rich biodiversity develop? How do these animals manage to survive? And what is their relationship with Lake Baikal? Over the past few decades, national parks have been created around the lake. Here in the Baikal Lena Nature Reserve, Sergei and Natasha Chaburov are on a mission to protect and study this unique environment. <laughs> Natasha is a biologist. She could have got a job in a lab in Irkutsk, but she has chosen to live here with her husband in a cabin that measures only 12 square meters. Sergei is one of the reserve's forest rangers. By the size and height of these scratches, I'd say the bear is about four or five years old, an average sized bear. The animals you find most frequently throughout the reserve are roe deer, sika deer, reindeer, moose and mouse deer, which are all ungulates. And for carnivores you find brown bear, wolverines, wolves, lynx and foxes, of course. There we see deer feeding on the hill. Soon they'll be done with their breakfast and go off to rest until evening. I think along our coast there are about 300 deer within a territory that stretches 110 kilometers long. While Sergei tramps through the forest, Natasha takes samples each day for the reserve's biological studies lab. Because Baikal's underwater life is just as rich as that on land. Though the lake's water is very cold in winter, it is still home to countless species. My job is to study lakes, or more specifically, zooplankton, which I've been studying for 20 years. This zone hasn't been studied much by hydrogeologists, so it's a bit like virgin territory. Here in Baikal, these planktonic organisms are what make the water so clean, particularly the crustaceans and notably the Epistura baikalensis. This tiny organism is what allows us to call Baikal a self-cleaning lake. All these sponges and Epistura filter the water and keep it as clean as possible. Baikal's water is reputed to be the purest in the world. Scientists have long wondered how the lake manages to rid itself of impurities. To find out, one must be prepared to dive into three-degree water. People who come to Baikal who live in Irkutsk, or its outskirts, think there's not much life here. 
But actually, if you just lift a stone very gently, you realize it's teeming with life. One of the lake's most surprising endemic species is a strange creature called gubki. They almost look like water plants the way they flutter in the current, but gubki are actually primitive animals, freshwater sponges with no organs. Their vivid green color comes from the algae they live in symbiosis with. They have a calcium skeleton that filters the water. For example, a two centimeter square sponge is able to filter close to 20 liters of water a day. The water and everything else there is passes through the sponges. For instance, organic residue, the remains of algae or other dead organisms. It all collects on the surface. Obviously, the pores where the water flows through and is filtered would get clogged if no one was around to clean them. But a large quantity of different organisms exist by cleaning these sponges' bodies. Guki have lived in the lake for over three million years and are a genuine biological treasure. Without them, the lake's water wouldn't be as transparent. The exceptional purity of the water has made it possible to set up an uncommon scientific instrument in the lake. Composed of a string of underwater spheres, the Baikal Deep Underwater Neutrino Telescope is an electronic eye fixed on the stars. It tirelessly peruses the heavens in search of evasive elementary particles, neutrinos. These particles travel at the speed of light and are emitted by some of the most spectacular cosmic events in the universe, such as solar eruptions or supernovas. Neutrinos have virtually no mass and travel through interstellar space unstopped by any obstacles they encounter. They pass straight through the Earth from one side to the other, which slows them down and makes it possible to observe them. It takes an enormous quantity of the purest water possible for the neutrino detector to function. And there are few places on Earth that fulfill these conditions as perfectly as Lake Baikal. In order to record, the environment has to be very transparent, whether water or ice. And the waters of Baikal are the most transparent of any lake in the world. It is also the deepest lake. Lake Baikal, our common treasure, has made it possible to gather this scientific information. That's why it was chosen. Sunk over a kilometer deep in Baikal, this detector may one day transform the way we see our universe. The depths of the lake harbor a multitude of other secrets. Some are known only to geologists who have plumbed the rocky strata several kilometers beneath the frozen surface of the lake. In Kakusi, in the north of the lake, Inhabitants enjoy the hot springs with little concern that the healing vapors are caused by intense volcanic activity, or that the Earth's crust is much thinner here than elsewhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 